What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about a film I got to check out just a little bit early and that movie is called The Killer. Directed by David Fincher and written by Andrew Kevin Walker who adapted this based on the book of the same name written by Alexis Nolent. This film stars people like Michael Fassbender, Tilda Swinton, Charles Parnell, Arliss Howard, and many more. And as I typically like to do anytime I get to check out a movie a little bit early, I like to say a big thanks to those kind of folks who let me check out the movie a little bit early. This time around, it's Netflix. So a big thanks to those kind of folks over at Netflix for sending me an invite to go check this movie out in a theater tonight. I just got home from checking it out. This film is going to be having limited theatrical screenings um, starting in October or the tail end of October now. So definitely check your local area if you were interested in checking this movie out, but will become widely available on Netflix for streaming starting November 10th. Again, a big thanks to those kind of folks over at Netflix for inviting me out. When I was invited to this one and I checked out what this movie was all about, I was ecstatic. And I was really excited because I had seen the poster earlier in the year and kind of forgot that this movie was coming out this year. Of course, as I mentioned before, this film is directed by David Fincher, who has given us some of the best just thrilling films that we've probably ever had in the last few decades. Some of the most iconic and standout films that are just filled with drama, dread, thriller elements and just you know a lot of times the things you want out of going to see a movie i've covered a few of his films here on the channel so far and without a doubt he's a filmmaker that i always have a lot of high praise to give even if i don't love the films that he makes entirely all the time i'm always always into whatever he's going to make next and this film most notably stars michael fassbender as the killer and that's how he's credited in the film he's a man of many aliases who is an assassin who at the very start of this film we learn a lot about via just internal monologue a lot of the first 10 minutes of the film is just us getting a sense of his outlook on life and his philosophy in life via his internal monologue learning very quickly that this is a very calculated and meticulous assassin who takes his job incredibly seriously however when one of these assassination jobs unfortunately goes south the fallout of that failure unfortunately leads to uh, some sort of tragedy within his own personal life, setting him on a path for revenge. I'll leave it at that when it comes to the narrative, of course, as the film has not come out yet, and that's uh, pretty close to the synopsis that they have released for this film thus far. Like I said, I almost forgot this film was coming out this year, but when I saw the email that I was invited to go check this out, I was definitely knowing I was going to be there. I was going to make it a point to go and check this movie out. And I'm happy to say I really, really enjoyed The Killer. And I think, once again, David Fincher proves why he is one of just the most notable directors that we have out there these days. On top of that, you also have great cast members in this film, with the most notable one being Michael Fassbender as The Killer, who gives a performance that almost feels similar to things we've seen of his before when it comes to a lot of the big villain roles that he's played or some of these kind of weirdos that he's played in some of his roles. But overall, he kind of combines all of that to make this really intriguing person who is very driven and passionate and while he is an assassin and is somebody who kind of lacks empathy in a lot of ways he ultimately is consistently somebody that I found myself rooting for throughout the course of the film while also somebody that I was consistently feeling for and constantly intrigued to learn more about even though the film does a really good job of giving you what you need to know about this character without giving you enough about this character but it's done in a, such a tasteful way that you're consistently like I really like this character and I don't, I don't really feel like I need to know more but I want to know more and it never feels like the film gives me too little but I would honestly like to know more but I don't necessarily need it and I think that that's ultimately one of my favorite things when it comes down to the killer in this film and in a lot of ways this is something that could have been a pretty straightforward simple revenge tale but when you have somebody like David Fincher behind the camera and you have somebody like Michael Fassbender in front of the camera it's ultimately made out to be a really strong film that I found was incredibly well shot it has a very eerie oftentimes haunting and tension filled musical score that accompanies the entire film Film. The performances across the board are incredibly well done, and whether it be the sound design, the cinematography, the musical score, as I mentioned, the sound mix, this film is just really well put together. And even if you don't necessarily love every element of this film, even if you might find certain elements of this film to be a little bit slow, as I did at times, I ultimately was not disappointed on any level when it comes down to the filmmaking of this film, as I found that to be incredibly solid throughout the entirety of the runtime. Now, 
Like a lot of David Fincher films, there are some slower moments as the story a lot of times needs to breathe. And while I found most of the slow moments in this film to be brief, there were some moments throughout the course of the film where I found myself thinking, okay, I hope things start to pick up once again. But I'm happy to say that I found the first three fourths of the film to be incredibly strong and incredibly gripping with there being one hand to hand action sequence that takes place in a home in Florida, actually, which is funny enough. And there's some nice jokes throughout the course of the film poking fun at Florida. There's a great sequence, a great action sequence that takes place about middle point of the movie that was incredible. Whether it be the cinematography, whether it be the choreography, whether it be the sound design, and again, that haunting yet eerie and tension filled score. I found that sequence alone to be one of my favorite things that I've probably seen in a movie this year and ultimately is probably one of the things I can say about this film on an overall level is that there are elements of this film that stood out to me as some of my favorite things that I've seen in a movie this year. However, as I just mentioned, I found the first three fourths of the film to be that strong. And while I found the last fourth of the film to still be incredibly well made, I ultimately can genuinely say I didn't necessarily love the ending of the film. I'm still scratching my head about the ending of the film and ultimately I almost feel like I would have given this a higher review or higher score on Letterboxd had that final part of the film kind of stuck the landing a little bit more for me. I think it's really going to depend on what you want out of this movie but I personally found the ending leading into the credits to be slightly underwhelming and just a little bit disappointing even though I really enjoyed the rest of the film and it's one of those movies where it's like do you consider it to be a movie you didn't like or a movie that you're disappointed by if you don't necessarily love the ending, but you can look at the rest of the movie and still be incredibly impressed by it? And I think that's something I'm going to have to sit with a little bit longer as I just saw the movie. And I genuinely think that there are certain elements about this film that I didn't like that will grow on me as time goes on. And I'm hoping that another visit of this movie will kind of change my perspective on a couple of things and make me love the ending a little bit more because I really did enjoy this film and I did really enjoy myself throughout the entirety of the time I was glued to the screen I was really never bored outside of like I said a couple of brief moments where the movie slowed down a little bit and my brain started to think okay I hope things ramp up again it never felt like the movie slowed down for too long to ever bore me I was consistently engaged with all the filmmaking elements that were going in I was consistently impressed I was consistently just gripped by the progression of the narrative and I just really found this to be a great time at the movies and I think it's a bummer that this is a movie that probably most people will see on Netflix versus going to see it in a theater where I felt like I was just completely glued in to the experience. There were some other gripes I'd have to say about this film outside of some slow brief moments as well as uh, my personal feelings on how the movie ended and it kind of not necessarily being the most exciting ending for me kind of being a little bit underwhelmed with the way it ended. I would say that there are a couple of moments throughout the course of this journey to seek revenge that felt a little bit convenient in terms of how our main character, the killer, is discovering some information that would get him to the next place or the next person that he needs to seek out to kill or get information from. But outside of that, genuinely guys, I found The Killer to be a really impressive film. But as I mentioned, there are moments where it gets a little slow and I think that the last half of the film slowly started to make some decisions that felt like things were losing steam that left me kind of scratching my head a little bit as the credits were rolling. I see what they were going for and I'm hoping that a revisit will help smooth out some of those edges for me but uh, ultimately I found this to be a solid movie that I do recommend and I hope you check it out when it comes out uh, whether it's in a limited theatrical window um, or checking it out on Netflix. And if you checked out the movie and that's what brought you here to this review we'll definitely want to hear what you guys have to say and I invite any and all uh, opinions on this film because I do think that this is a movie that while I really enjoyed it, depending on people's taste, you may not love it. You know, it may not be up your alley. Uh, again, for me, this was something that could have easily just been a throwaway, simple revenge tale that put in the right director's hands and given the right performer to play the role, um, ultimately made for a really solid time at the movies, uh, just giving us another tension-filled David Fincher film, um, which I'm always accepting of. So a big thanks to you beautiful people for watching. Hit that like button, comment your thoughts, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next ones. Bye-bye.